Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, come on, David. Have a little more cream. Nope, no thanks. Oh, poor Majesty, giving us all this cream for nothing. Well, I guess I'll have some more. Take the whole pitcher full if you want. I to. have never seen such slush. Such what? David, have you ever seen such slush? Such slush? Yes. Where? Well, where do you think where? Where would slush be? I'm sure I wouldn't know. The marmalade, please. Right here. Now, listen, don't put your nose back in your paper. I haven't finished. You haven't even begun because I'm going to the office. I am still talking? Mm -hmm. Well, that's just exactly why I'm going. Oh, And sweet. don't you try being stern with me. You're punk at it. I can't win, that's all. David, when will you be home? Be home early? I may never come home at all. I wouldn't blame you. <laughs> It was a lovely, quiet breakfast until a little woman that I know started talking about slush. What's so terrible about slush? Because that same little woman must think that I'm a sap. <gasps> Did I say that? Mm, practically. When? You think you can put it over on me, don't you? Well, you haven't got a chance. Not a chance. David, what are you talking about? You think I don't know why you mentioned slush. Oh, so casually. Was there a reason? Mm. If I hadn't so carefully deviated the conversation. Deviated. Why... Oh, what a lovely word. Sounds like something the dentist said. Are you listening to me? Yes, go on. Well, if I hadn't have allowed it, you would have gone on from slush to wet roads to puddles in the sidewalk and from puddles in the sidewalk to rain and from rain to my wearing a raincoat and an umbrella, right? Well, you don't wear an umbrella, David. You carry Now, it. look me in the eye. Was that your insidious plot? Well, as a matter of fact, I hadn't thought of the umbrella business. You, you don't look like an umbrella. Uh, but, but the rest was your plot now, wasn't it? The defense rest. The defense? Mm. Huh. Well, I never. I am the defense, my good man. Here I take all the trouble of figuring out a subtle way of advising you mm, to wear a raincoat, uh -huh. Robert. All I get is insults. I'm <laughs> outraged. <laughs> I am. I'm outraged. Uh, what's the matter? Don't you have the courage to come right on out and tell me that no, I should I wear No, I don't my... have the courage, and it's all your fault. Uh, just for that? I will not wear them. All right, don't. I Walk won't. around and slush up to your ankles. It doesn't matter to you that you just had a cold. Yeah, over three weeks ago, I cold I'm not was. going to worry. I try to hint subtly. It doesn't subtly. work. <laughs> I'm too smart for you. I try to advise. It doesn't work. I will not be pampered. Pamper your son if you must, but leave me out of it. Oh, if I'd pamper your son, you'd wring my neck. You bet your sweet life I would. Hey, where's my coat? In the closet. Where do you think? In the closet. You're right. David, Roger wears Roberts. He wore them here just the other night. Oh. I saw him. Uh, Roger is 20 years older than I am. That's all the more reason That you should follow no... his example. Claudia. He has years more experience than you. Where is my brief? On the chair. I suppose you think Roberts aren't man. That has nothing to do with it. Nothing Much. at all. Doesn't have a They thing sell to them do. in men's shoe stores, well, don't what's they? What's men's shoe stores got to do well, with it? Well, they're designed to be worn over men's shoes, aren't they? Mm, well, don't you bought right. a pair at one time or another, didn't you? No, I certainly didn't. Well, not. wear them. You forgot one thing. I did? Mm -hmm. What? That it's a waste of money to have bought them and not to wear them. You forgot that. Oh. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Mm -hmm. But it is. I knew it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. You hadn't thought of that. Mm, no. Well, the way your mind runs to pennies and cents. Well, and... it's a cinch. I have more sense than you. Now, that does it. I thought it would. <laughs> Now, I'll tell you. Oh, do. I was going to wear my rubbers. I was perfectly willing to wear them. Till you just crack that lowly pun. David, you're fooling. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not fooling. I was going to wear them all along. Oh. Well, I, I thought you would, but I enjoy arguing. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm. sure. Quick, darling, I'll get them before you change your Now, mind. wait a minute. First, a promise. You mean a blind promise? No, not a blind promise. Just, just a promise that you'll never tell me to wear them again. You, you must take me for an idiot. I'll take you any old way. Oh, sweet. But promise now. Nothing doing. All right, all right. Goodbye. David, you'll be sopping wet by the time you get into the car. Then promise. Oh, I suppose I... Oh, all right, no, I no, promise. No, no fingers crossed or anything. No, look. Well, I don't trust you. Well, I don't trust you. Go on, get into the closet and get your rubbers out. 
Before I bat my eyelashes, you'll disappear without them, I suppose. Bat your eyelashes. Golly, those rubbers must be moldy by now. Well, that's exactly the way I like them. Oh, nice, boy. moldy rubber. That's the best way. Hey, put the light on in the closet. I don't need it. Your rubbers are way back on the floor someplace. You better put the light on. Oh, all right, I'll do it. I'll do it. Where are they? Hey, it's certainly a nice, bright light, isn't it? David, you'll get your hands dirty. Where are my rubbers? I told you, darling, in the back on the floor. I can't find them. Oh, of course you can find them. Of course, of course, of course. Only I can. David, they must be there. I saw them there. When? Oh, how do I know? When I saw them, that's enough. How I ever let myself go talk to her? Go get that coat out. Darling, what do you have down there? I don't know. I haven't the slightest idea. Galoshes, maybe? I will not David, wear listen. Galoshes. If you can't find your rubbers, hey, you can here, always here, here wear. Here comes the glove, I think. Oh. Well, for heaven's sakes, my leather mitten. I've been looking for it for weeks. Yeah, a fine little housekeeper you turned out to be. Well, anybody can lose a mitten. Uh, Even a kitten. Uh, uh, oh, found one. Here's one. Good. Throw it out. All these coats. Oops. I didn't know we had so many coats. We don't have so many coats. They're all around my neck. I'm suffocating. Hey, here's something else. Oh, good. What's that? I don't know. Have a look. Well, for heaven's sake, Mama's handbag. She's looking for it before she left. I wonder what it's doing on the floor in the closet. I wonder what I'm doing on the floor in the closet. You know, darling, since the baby creeps around, everything disappears. David, it must be in there. I distinctly saw two, and uh, you know, a robber can't walk off all by itself. And if you didn't keep the card table in here, there might be more room. There's no other place to put the card table. I'm the kind of housekeeper who doesn't like things showing. Well, I'm the kind of housekeeper that likes to find things where they belong. What are you complaining about? <sighs> David, you have the second rubber right there in your hand. Mm, I had a devil of a time finding it in that closet. It's darker down there on that floor than the black hole of Calcutta. Oh, I didn't know you'd been to Calcutta. In another reincarnation. My. Whew. That's a fine way to start a day, I must say. I think you were a squirrel in another reincarnation. I'll have to comb my hair all over again. Terrible tragedy. Well, if I made you crawl around on the floor of that closet, I'd never hear the end of it. Well, I know I'm that a woman. It's woman different. Has, it makes no difference at all. Before you change your mind. Well, Go my on. mind was never unchanged. Darling, don't you want to sit on the chair so you don't break your neck? No, I have perfect balance. People with perfect balance break their necks, too. Probably even more often. Uh, how do you figure that? Well... Firstly, because they're so proud of their perfect balance that they take chances people without perfect balance would have the sense not to take. A very Ooh. convincing argument. I thought so, too. There. You see, I have one rubber on already. Well, you were probably standing on your good foot. Mm, well, both of my feet are good, thank you. Well, no credit to you. I hate rubbers. They remind me of when I had a governess. That poor woman. She must have had to have infinite patience. David, you're going to break your neck. I'm warning you for the last manage, time. I can manage. I can manage. Well, so I see. Confounded rubber. Won't go on. It's funny the other foot went on all right. Yeah, I can't understand it. It should fit. Well, maybe your good feet are different after all. Well, my shoes aren't. Oh, David, listen, please sit down. You know, that's what these chairs in the front hall are for. Oh, all right. Huh, something must be the matter with this rubber. Well, once you sit down, darling, you'll see how simple it is. It doesn't fit any better sitting down than it did standing up. Well, no wonder. No wonder what? It's a rubber for my left foot. A what? A rubber for my left foot, and I'm trying to get it on my right foot. Well, then you must have the rubber for your right foot on your left foot. Switch around. No, my left rubber is on my left foot. Well, I'd have had more trouble getting it on. Well, that is certainly queer. Mm -hmm. I just have two left-handed rubbers, that's all. Yep, that's what it is. Two left-handed rubbers. That's great. Huh. It's convenient, all right. I wonder how... Uh... Darling, maybe when you bought the rubbers, you had two left feet. Uh, it could be. It was a yes. quite, a, quite a while ago. Mm. Oh, you must have been terribly attractive with two left feet. Yeah, I was. I, I walked kind of sidewise, like this, you see. You mean slew-footed? Mm -hmm. Or pigeon toed. Well, let me see now. Uh, one one foot was pigeon toed and one foot was slew foot. Oh, what charm! So it gets that this must effect, have given you. See? As you Beautiful. go down the street, well, isn't that lovely? When That's I walk down the street, everybody turned around and looked at me. Yeah. Oh, I wish I'd known you then. Now, come to think of it, 
whoever it was who took my right rubber and left me his left one. Come to think of it now. Mm -hmm. He must have two right feet. Say, that's true. Mm -hmm. Well, I hadn't thought of that. Now, well, let's see. Think hard. Yes, I'm thinking. Now, who do we know with two right feet? I will bet you that half the people we know have two right feet. Mm -hmm. Only we don't know it. Yeah, but but who's been up here with two right feet? In rubbers? Mm -hmm. Um, only Roger. Roger? Mm -hmm. Oh, how happy that partner of mine must have been when he spied my right rubber. <laughs> I'll bet a man with two right feet has a terrible time buying a pair of oh, rubbers. Must. So he has to go around snitching the right feet of his friends. Mm, well, Nothing just, else for him to do. Just wait till I get my hands on him, though. Poor Roger. Well, I am on my way. David, the robbers. What about them? Well, aren't you going to wear them? Now, look. Fun is fun, darling. But I have not got two left feet. Fun is fun, but Roger hasn't got two right feet either. So if he can, you can put them on. Now, Claudia. Oh, go on. Force yourself. David, you promised me a promise. Did I do that? You did, in a moment of weakness? No, I cannot go back on my promise. In that case, I shall wear my rubber. Good. I didn't promise to wear anybody else's, so I shall wear only mine. David, now you can't go running around in one rubber. Oh, who says I can't? Well, all the other commuters will whisper and talk. Who cares? I shall wear my one rubber and no more. Oh, David. The other you doesn't can't. fit, so it's one or none at all. Personally, I think it's a very happy compromise. David, you're such an idiot. What are you going to do with the other one? Bring it into Roger and exchange it for mine. See, I can wear it, uh, wear it on my left hand. See? Oh, of course, it fits mm -hmm. perfectly. There, looks, looks stunning good, too. It? Mm -hmm. Oh, stunning. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, David. Hey, don't you, don't you even want to shake rubbers with me? I do not. And all I can say is, if I were walking down the street with you, I wouldn't know you. Okay, well, bye-bye. David, watch out for the slush. You'll get your foot wet. Listen, hop, David. Please, for heaven's sakes, hop. Going to be home for lunch tomorrow? Want to give your noon meal a special touch without a bit of trouble? Bring home a carton of Coca-Cola today and have an ice-cold bottle of delicious Coke with your sandwich or salad. It's so easy and so pleasant to lunch refreshed. Say, Joe... You wouldn't happen to have uh, two left feet, would you? Two left? Mm -hmm. um, well, let me have a look. No, I guess I have one of each, David. How inconvenient of you. Now I'll have to carry this rubber all the way into town. Oh, it's a tough life. It sure is. You don't know how tough it is and how wet. Well, then, Claudia was right. It's very slushy out, huh? Oh, I meant wet with milk. With what? With milk. Our cow is flooding us with milk, Joe. I mean it. She gives us 20 quarts a day. And for a small family, that is a lot of milk. I'll say it is. What are you going to do about it? So far, I've been drinking it, but we'll have to figure something out. Would you like a bottle? Oh, no, thanks. I'll have a Coke. Uh, hey, you better rush for that train there, David. Hop. For heaven's sakes, hop, man. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Starr. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs> 